I'm Shannon and welcome to part three of the series of five uh, daily tips for musicians presented by the Cape Town Music Academy. Um, it might be worthwhile checking out my first and second parts uh, only because I make some references and I continue on some ideas. Uh, so it's nice to get the full um, train of thought. Uh, this third part, I want to talk about the responsibility and roles of um, teachers, mentors, educators, lecturers, um, positions, uh, people in positions of leadership and also those of you who are in learning positions. And uh, I was fortunate enough to grow up in a musical and creative household, thanks to my mom and dad. And um, we started, my brother and I started on soprano sax and E-flat clarinet and piccolo. And as our fingers grew, so the instruments grew. My instruments are still, in fact, growing, even if my fingers have stopped. Um, the whole environment was uh, never formal, uh, but it was uh, Dad exposing us to these instruments, giving us some tools and letting us find out for ourselves, and then creating these environments uh, for us to play uh, and literally learning as we went, uh, learning on the fly, and the whole process uh, of uh, music coming into our lives was like osmosis. It was just something we did. So I think... The main thing dad planted for us or this whole process was planted was the love of music and the uh, curiosity to find out for ourselves. These are two of the vital things I talk about in the first episode that I feel are important um, at the cornerstone of any kind of creative journey. And I think as educators or people in the lead leading positions, that's the thing that we really need to uh, inspire in, in people around us and musicians around us is this love and, and curiosity for this thing, this music thing, this creative thing. And I think it's also important to address in yourself if, if yours has kind of jaded a little or you've lost your inspiration or what have you, to just revisit that and try and find it again because you can't share something that isn't there. Uh, you have to feel it uh, to share it. So those two things are the first uh, focus for me. Um, and then dad uh, shared this beautiful story of when he was teaching at the Athlone School for the Blind. There was this young uh, boy who used to come in and play drums. Uh, and one day he came in and clearly he was skipping a class and his teacher came in shortly afterwards and said uh, to my dad, have you seen this boy? And he said, yes, he's on the drum kit. And the, the woman was a little taken aback at him playing drums and then went and fetched the occupational therapist who then came back and they observed this boy for a while and he was playing away there and uh, after some time the occupation, occupational therapist said to my dad do you realize that he's not supposed to be able to do that he's not supposed to be able to play drums his muscle coordination uh, doesn't work that well he shouldn't be able to play drums and my dad's response was well nobody's ever told him he can't play drums and the, it is such an amazing uh, triumph over the expectations one puts on people. And if we think about um, how many times maybe we do the same as teachers, we have a preconceived idea of, the pos of what is possible with a student or with a musician, and we've already decided what we think is possible. And here this boy who couldn't play drums apparently physically he was playing drums. And then I really think about this idea of the possibility of all possibilities, of opening that, that up, opening up the doors so anything is possible, no matter who you are and the, where you come from. And then offering options, offering the, this is a choice. This is a choice you can make. Here's an option to do it this way. Here's a, another way to do it but not to limit the way the person does it. At the end of the day, I think we are just there to switch on some switches, to ignite some sparks that may then run by themselves. 
that will get our little hamster that I speak about in the beginning running. Uh, and, and it's quite amazing. Uh, in, in fact, I've on the weekend managed to observe some young musicians who found something in themselves. And it was so obvious because when you find that thing and when it turns on, there's no criticism, there's no judgment because it's just truth. And what is real cannot be threatened. So if we can ignite that uh, in other musicians or in other people or in people around us, when we play, that we inspire that thing to want to find something out about yourself. And I hate this idea of these, you know, when you put uh, boxes down and you have to play for a concert and you have to have this achievement. I, I know that sometimes there's this goal orientation stuff and um, sometimes it's necessary and of course there's a concert to aim for or whatever, but, but if one can think of this journey as an entire process for the rest of your life you will be on this journey, um, then you don't get stuck along the way and judge too harshly uh, along the way and understand this is a process. There's no final product here. Um, you are continuously learning. And to recognize also that not all people uh, absorb information in the same way. Um, there's this idea of fixed mindset uh, or growth mindset. Uh, fixed mindset is pretty much uh, that you accept what is there and uh, get that, um, work on, with that to the maximum. Whereas a growth mindset is to see how does this shape, how does this work around. Much of what I was talking about on the environment about environment and how you shape the environment around the person uh, to bring out the best uh, in them. Much uh, like the, the, if I have to put words to it, uh, I think a lot of my thoughts are very much in line with the Montessori way of, of teaching or Steiner or Waldorf, where you are shaping around uh, to see how, how can you get this again, the sculpture out. Um, I think that is our real responsibility and role as educators or people who are working with this creative thing. And in the same time, to be intact with ourselves in all of this, in our own creativity. I, I, have, to, uh, I have to be more on top of my game if I'm uh, teaching, I feel, uh, because I need to offer more possibilities. I, the more the different students I get, I need to find different ways to ignite, uh, help them ignite it, because it's ultimately them, not you, that's going to get this ball rolling. So also if we come from a place of uh, losing the hierarchy that I keep talking about, uh, let's uh, get it that we are equal. We're coming from a position of sharing that no person has more to say than another. Okay, I might be a little further along in this journey, uh, than a six-year-old child who's picking up an instrument for the first time. But perhaps their creativity is more intact than mine. So if we have start with this level of respect that we are both learning from each other um, and I can give you some tools, I can give you some options, I can show you some directions, but I'm not going to dictate my way of doing things and I think this is sometimes a danger with teachers of this is how you have to do it <laughs> because that's how I learned to do it or that's how I failed doing it worse um, but I think with this idea of hierarchy this thing uh, where a teacher is up here or educator and the student is down there this space creates some room for some horrible activity including the abuse of power um, and what I mean by that is, for instance, that this person feels that their creativity is more important. And, and, and in the same token, then the, the person in the learning environment may feel that what they have to say is not as valid, which I don't feel is true. Um, so this thing is not so good from that point, but then it also allows for emotional, physical, all kinds of other kinds of abuse that can be uh, happening in the space. And, one I feel very strongly about, uh, and especially right now, is the um, sexual abuse that happens. What happens, it gets very confusing when you're looking up to somebody and you're admiring them uh, creatively or as a person or whatever. The minute you have this uh, distance, then, then it's easy to manipulate, take advantage, um, and, and use the situation for the wrong reasons. 
I think it's important to also uh, differentiate the person uh, and their expression. You might love what they do, you might think it's wonderful, but to separate the, the music from the musician or creativity from the creator. To understand that just because they're a wonderful musician and what have you, they might not have the most honorable intentions. They might not be the most honorable people. And when something doesn't feel right, it's not right. And as far as I'm concerned, uh, there is no place for this. In the creative learning process, there is no place. Uh, no matter how you might work your way around the rules of the systems, there's no place. Creative energy and uh, this learning environment, it's sacred. If you mix the two, it gets messy and it starts with a whole lot of bias and a whole lot of stuff that is going to, in some way or another, affect somebody negatively. Perhaps there is something going on, uh, an attraction or whatever. Keep it for, it can wait. It can wait. Finish this learning process first. Or This is not a place that should have this. You should be free to explore yourself musically, creatively, to be safe. And if you're coming from levels of equality, then there's more transparency. Then there's more room to call out somebody's bad behavior and not feel that you will be compromised because of it. So I think the more we can work towards this coming on equal footing and sharing, the more we can get rid of these monsters in the industry that are abusing their power. <laughs> Tu ri, tu ri, tu ri.